welcome also to Claire Pearsall, former Conservative Government Advisor. Good morning to you. Good morning. Always a pleasure to have your company here. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Um, lots to talk about. Um, <laughs> don't know where we start. Um, uh, uh, my question today isn't actually about what Keir Starmer's got to say, because I just don't know what he's got to say. Um, I'm hoping it's a bit more upbeat than uh, what we heard from Rachel Reeves yesterday. We didn't take it live, because obviously we like our audience yes. too much. But the bits I have seen, I've read it, and then the bits I actually seen the clips, it's very angry. It's all about those awful sodding Tories, it's mm. all their fault, we're going to do our best. You know, but it was very much looking backwards, I felt, rather than forwards. We, we're now told, you know, that Kirsten was going to talk about the future. This is the big keynote set speech from a Prime Minister. Um, Labour, first Prime Minister, Labour Prime Minister since 2010. Um, massive, big, whopping great, mm -hmm. 170 majority, 412 MPs. And they're completely on the back foot. Just 11 and a half weeks into, or almost 12 weeks now, uh, into their term of office. He's going to say there is light at the end of this tunnel uh, and he's going to warn that he can't lower taxes until he fills the spending black hole left by the Conservatives, of course. But talking about how the politics of national renewal are collective, what does that even mean? They involve a shared struggle, he says. A project that says to everyone, this will be tough in the short term, but in the long term, it's the right thing to do for our country and we all benefit from that. If we stick to the driving purpose behind everything we do, higher economic growth, yeah, we're in favour of that. Um, so living standards rise in every community. Our NHS facing the future, waiting lists at your hospital down, safer streets in your community, stronger borders, more opportunities for your children, clean British energy powering your home, making our country more secure then that light at the end of this tunnel that britain that belongs to you we get there much more quickly um that would all be great do you have any expectation <laughs> that he's going to achieve any let alone all of that no Okay, no, and, and I think that you, you start looking at the words, and they're, they're very nice. I mean, it yes. sounds like a sixth form uh, politics. Come by, my lord, come is, by does, does he finish with namaste? Because he should. Um, it, it's lovely. It sounds very nice, but when you look at the backdrop as to what's happened previously, before the conference, with all of the freebies, mm. uh, with all of the holidays, all of the pointing the fingers at the Tories to say they were terrible, but you know, we're all doing the same thing yeah. anyway. Um, I don't think it's going to really do much for the country. No, I, I just I just don't see that they are going to be confident, competent and able to do this. The Tories definitely weren't, no. um, but I don't think this are at all. Well, the Home Secretary Yvette Cooper, if you're watching on our YouTube page, you'll see we've actually got her uh, speaking. I love this change begins uh, yep. uh, sign. You know, they've, they've got, I just, yeah, OK. And there yeah. must be some good anagrams of that, folks. Do send them in. <laughs> Keep them clean. Usual rules. Um, but the Home Secretary Yvette Cooper is announcing a crackdown on street crime. She wants to take back town centres from thugs and thieves. Now, I'm all in favour of this. Mm -hmm. We need to have more of that. Um, uh, I want to know what your reaction is to this. So um, give us a call. 0344 499 1000 is the number to call. You can text on 87222. Get in touch on X at Talk TV. Calls are charged at the National rate text cost one standard network rate message you can leave a free message on our youtube page i mean i think this is the bane of a lot of people's lives yeah. right now and quite apart from the cost of living and people's concern about mass immigration and things like that legal and legal um is the idea you know the, the shoplifting that is absolutely rampant mm -hmm. people jumping over the barriers at the train station uh, um, people kicking off on buses you don't feel safe on a bus anymore um there's the, the littering the 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 e-bikes e and the scooters just strewn everywhere across mm -hmm. the street the 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 abuse the um you know the the, the phone theft the bag theft. you I mean, just the general feeling and there is a really strong feeling of lawlessness in this country and i know it's not you know you know downtown place in mexico or something but there is just a general feeling that the the, the police aren't there nothing's going to happen if there is a crime mm -hmm. and and that this sort of what called sort of low level crime is has basically to all intents and purposes being legalized because yeah. it's never punished yeah, and, and i think that's the problem and that's what most people see it's things like car crime it's things like bag theft mobile phone thefts uh, breaking into your car the police just aren't interested. No. They'll send you out a reference number for your insurance oh, yeah. company. Move on. And that's it. And, and off you I, go. I can vouch for this, having had my bag theft. 1st of June. What is it? Mid-September now. Yeah. Um, I emailed the police yesterday to say, you know you called me about five, six weeks ago to say that you had actually got the name 
finally, I've given you, I've given you the CCTV of the of the of the two men who actually stole my bag. You've got them on video doing that, what they're wearing, and everything. You've also got me confronting one of them in a McDonald's. I tracked tracked him down via my AirPods an hour later. I mean, I've done all the work for you, yeah. right? I've directed you to where I've given you the mobile number of the security guard in the supermarket. I mean, I've done everything. I've literally laid it out on a red carpet for you. Um, they said we found, well, we, we we've identified him. We knew his name. But he wasn't living at his last known address, they told me five, six weeks ago. So we haven't been able to find him. I did say, well, I mean, you, if you give me his number, yes. his name is, I can probably track him down quicker than you. But I left it. I thought I'll leave, you know, leave them, get yeah. on with it. Messaged him yesterday. Um, what is the latest on this? Oh, we have found him. You'll never guess where he is, my bag thief. He's been in prison. So they couldn't find him. He's in prison. Now I'm waiting to find out when he actually went to prison. So was he already in prison? Is there any joined up thinking whatsoever? <laughs> he was supposed to be released last week, last week, and they were going to do one of those gate arrests where they just turn up and arrest yes. him. You know, can't arrest him in prison. I don't understand. Um, and uh, and then he wasn't released because because of another crime that he's beat on remark. I mean, it's. I mean, I know we're all surprised that the man who stole my bag is a prolific thief. I know it's a complete shock to everyone, isn't it? Um, it wasn't it. It wasn't his first time. Oh, who knew? Who knew? Um, but now they're waiting. I kid you not. They're they're seeking permission from the the the, the guy, the, the suspect. They're seeking permission from him to interview him behind bars. And then they're going to send the, the, ca the case to this current prosecution service to decide whether they prosecute. I've got a video with him yeah. stealing my bag. <laughs> We've got his bag. We've got, I mean, I'm so sorry. I, I don't think there's a decision here. He should be prosecuted. But why give him the choice? Why does it say, oh, excuse but, me, Mr. Criminal, yeah. can we please come and interview First you? of June. First of June. Ah. That's this, this bag theft happened. I'm 500 quid down. That's right. Yvette Cooper's going to crack down. She's got a new knife-enabled robbery task. Yeah. Oh, well, there you are. That's sorted. But, the, but this is the thing. The, the idea is they are going to, you know, they're going to tackle this. They, want, they say they're going to tackle, you know, mobile phone thieves. Mm. Um, they're, going to, they're going to do this police crackdown at the same time as new iPhones released. Oh, yeah, let's worry about the people who can afford the new iPhones. Yeah. Well, it, does, it doesn't matter if it's my third hand-me-down to my teenager. No. I don't want anyone's iPhone stolen. Um, but but it's, but it's also talk about they're going to have more seizures of e-bikes, um, you know, death traps, the police say, they're being taken off the streets. I think all e-bikes are death traps. Mm -hmm. I think all e-scooters are death traps, yep. largely because it's basically a load of young people in hoodies wearing black at night in them, basically running around doing their drug deals. Let's all stop pretending that's not the most yeah. of the people who use these sodding things. Um, riding on the pavements, riding the wrong way down one-way streets, you name it, they're a death trap. But particularly these ones, which have been altered, and almost a 1,000 have been confiscated in the last year, um, they've been altered, so they no longer have a 15-mile-per-hour speed limit. Some of them can go 70 mile per hour. And these people ride them, they're insane. But it, it's taken over from the old hot hatch, isn't it? Do you remember the boy racer cars where they used to take a, a one-litre engine and soup it up? Yeah. They're now doing this to, to bikes. Yeah. But there's easy, no... Easier getaway. Absolutely, and there's no legislation around these. And those e-scooters, those e I agree with you. I live in a village with, with no street lighting, mm. and you've got kids going around in yeah. black hoodies, puffers... Can't see them. I, I have to say, when any of them die as a result oh, of being hit, yeah, I, I care zero amount yeah. because it's like you take your chances. I'm sorry. I, I really I really have just got to the point where I just don't care mm -hmm. because these people are just so stupid and they are a danger to other people. Um, it is quite bizarre. Well, Yvette Cooper has just pledged in her speech to halve knife crime in a decade. That's I mean... Ambitious. Ambitious. Ten years. Well, yeah, but how many times have we heard about <laughs> yeah. knives? How many times have we heard about, you know, if you're found with a knife, yeah, you're yeah. going to go to jail? I mean, like something like 30 or 40%, even on a, even on a second offence, go to jail. The zombie knives, they're, they're, those are banned from today. I mean, your, your lot, when you work with the we Tories. Did that. Well, no, you guys, we did, we did you something. guys, actually, you enacted the law. You guys previously, you banned the zombie knives that had writing on them because we all know it's not the serrated edge, it's the writing on the knife. I mean, come on, you guys were just as useless. Yeah, OK. I mean, I like we did. I, I, well, what can you say? I mean, I can't sit here and go, no, we were great, because you would just kill me for it. I mean, it is well, just without a not, I couldn't do it with a zombie, not because that's enough. illegal. Well, it depends. Actually, with or know, without writing. With or without writing. writing. You can put I'll, I'll use my souped-up e-scooter. Oh, can you imagine? Oh, please. Can you? I mean... But I, I, just, I just think that if you carry a knife, you should be caught and you should be put in no. prison. It's quite simple to me. I don't you're not, understand. You're not on your way home from John Lewis, are you, with your, with your new knives? With your I kitchen mean, knife. Yeah, I was trying, I was trying, I was trying to buy a new kitchen <laughs> knife the other day online. Oh, you know, Google, get it delivered. And, um, and uh, no, no you, can't buy, you can't buy a knife from John Lewis. 
unless you, even if you're a regular customer you can't you know even if i was picking it up in store so i could you know you have to go into the store to go and buy your kitchen knife oh but i can go and order god knows what online i was gonna say i mean most most people seem to be able to order zombie yeah. knives online and get them delivered and, and nobody's an issue with it. yourselves out.